These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. All right, uh, we've been treating this like a reaction that went to completion, but now we'll treat it like a reaction that goes to equilibrium. I don't know what's true in real life, but we'll just use this as an example. All so. Right. Um, Okay, um, let's say that this reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. What does that mean? Um, that means the, the net reaction is going to move forward. But that doesn't mean the reverse reaction isn't happening. If this is an equilibrium reaction, then generally both reactions will always be happening. The reaction will always be going both forward and reverse. That means some of the nitrogen and hydrogen will always be colliding to form ammonia, and some of the ammonia will be at the same time dissociating to form nitrogen and hydrogen. It's always going in both directions. So what does it mean when the reaction is spontaneous forward if really both reactions are happening? Well, it means that the rate of the forward reaction is going to be greater or less than the rate of the reverse. For spontaneous forward, which rate would be faster? The forward rate? Yeah. forward rate greater than reverse rate. So when we look at this, we're going to see less and less starting materials and more and more products. We can't see things on the molecular level, so we can't see that the reaction is really going both ways. All that we can observe is that the amount of starting materials is decreasing over time, and the amount of products no, is increasing over time. Now, that's not because none of the products are going backwards, but fewer products are going backwards than starting materials are going forward. So on net, it's spontaneous forward. Okay? Now, then, um, what would it mean? Uh, so we, another way of putting this is to say that the reverse reaction is non-spontaneous. Now, what would it mean if the reaction was spontaneous in the reverse direction? That the reverse rate is faster than yeah. Forward rate less than the reverse rate. How could we tell by looking at the, the, the test tube or the beaker that the reaction was spontaneous in reverse? Um, would we be seeing more or less products over time? More product. Less product over time? If it's spontaneous reverse, oh, so it's going in this direction will be using up product and going back to these starting materials. Now what we won't see is that there's also still starting materials that are creating product, but they're doing it at a lower rate than the reverse rate. So all we'll be able to see on net is less of the product, more of the starting materials. Uh, this would be easier to see, say, if the starting materials were colored. This is maybe not the best example because these are all um, gases that you can't really see. But anyway, if the different products were colored, you could see that we would have less color from the product and more color from the starting materials if we were spontaneous in the reverse direction. So notice that this also means that the reaction is non-spontaneous in the forward direction. And actually, I should maybe put it that way, because usually people don't say spontaneous forward or spontaneous reverse. They just say spontaneous or non-spontaneous. If they say a reaction is spontaneous, they mean it's spontaneous in the forward direction. And if they say a reaction is non-spontaneous, they mean it's non-spontaneous in the forward direction. Note that the reaction is always spontaneous in one of the directions and non-spontaneous in the other direction. So in this case, it's spontaneous in reverse and non-spontaneous in the forward direction, which may be the, the way people would usually put it, so I'll write that down too. Non-spontaneous forward. And this reaction was non-spontaneous in reverse and spontaneous in the forward.
Now there's one other possibility. No reaction at all. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see, I suppose that's a possibility, but that's not what I was getting, getting at here. Equal? Yeah, what's the name of that situation? Who, who, who's equal? Both rates are equal? Yeah, the third situation is if the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate. And there's a name for when we're in that situation. That's equilibrium, yes. Equilibrium is when the forward rate equals the reverse rate. So we don't use the word spontaneous. So I said a second ago that there's always one direction that's spontaneous, but I lied. If you're in equilibrium, then neither direction is spontaneous. But if you're out of equilibrium, then there is always one direction that's spontaneous, either forward or reverse. So now, if we're in equilibrium, if we stare at the beaker over time, are we going to see an increase or decrease in the amount of products? Neither. Pardon? Neither. No change over time? Right, good. That was a trick question. That's right. Since we're in equilibrium, we're not going to see either an increase or a decrease in the amount of products. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no products being made at the molecular level. If we could look at the molecules, we would see products being made all the time, but that would be exactly balanced by the products that are going through the reverse reaction. So from our macroscopic point of view, it seems like no products are being produced, although what really is happening is products are both being produced and used up at the same rate. And the same thing for the starting materials. In equilibrium, it seems like there's no change in the amount of starting materials. And at the microscopic level, that would be because the creation of starting materials is exactly balancing um, the using up of the starting materials. So a lot of people don't understand what equilibrium really means. It's all about comparing the forward and the reverse rates. Remember we said earlier that there's two types of reactions. Some reactions go to equilibrium and some reactions go to completion. Well, we spent a lot of time in the last couple of sessions dealing with the basic tools for reactions that go to completion. And the basic tool there is the limiting reagent. Um, well, now we have the other type of reaction. Note that there is no limiting reagent here, because this is not going to go until we run out of one of the starting materials. If we're going to equilibrium, then there will be positive amounts of all of the reagents um, in the equilibrium. What can you tell me about the delta G for this row? The top row. Yeah, that's right. So is a negative delta G favorable or unfavorable? Favorable. favorable. That seems a, lot, a little bit weird. What does delta G stand for that gives free energy? It's a little bit weird for something negative to be favorable. But do you remember from physics, things like to decrease their energy, not increase their energy. For example, if I drop my planner, is it going to increase or decrease its gravitational potential energy? If it gets to do what it wants, it would decrease its gravitational potential energy. Okay. Um, so, a reaction where energy is going down is a favored reaction. Now, technically what we're saying is that the delta G of the forward reaction here is negative. The delta G of the reverse reaction would be positive, but usually we just focus on the delta G of the forward reaction. So what can you say about this delta G? It's greater than zero. Here, we're in the middle row. Positive? Oh, um. And how about this one? Positive. Right. Positive delta G is unfavorable, which explains why the forward reaction here is non-spontaneous. Now, you could say here that the delta G for the reverse reaction is negative, but people don't usually talk about the delta G for that reverse reaction. The delta G for the forward reaction here is positive, which explains why it's non-spontaneous. And you can see why in equilibrium, delta G has to be zero, because in equilibrium, neither reaction is spontaneous. Well, if delta G was negative, forward would be spontaneous. And if delta G is positive, reverse would be spontaneous. So the only way that neither can be spontaneous is to be delta G of zero. Now, what we're making here is a table of synonyms. If, any, if the problem tells you somewhere that the forward rate equals the reverse rate, you know automatically that delta G is zero and that we're in equilibrium. Or if somebody tells you that delta G is positive, you know automatically that that means the forward rate is less than the reverse rate, although most people wouldn't make that connection. But that's the kind of connection we need to make during the test. Um, so everything in each row is a synonym for everything else in the same row. This is a very important table.